This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Check out the links in the video description to get 20% off a year of Brilliant Premium. What's going on guys? Uh, so today we're going to create a scorpion in Blender. Uh, now there are two versions of this tutorial. There's the beginner version and the advanced version. Uh, this is the advanced version. If you're new to Blender, this tutorial is definitely not for you. But if you've been using Blender for quite some time and are familiar with uh, um, uh, sculpting, modeling, uh, texturing and all that basic stuff, this tutorial might be quite interesting for you. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a quick basic uh, reference sketch using the annotate tool. So uh, basically, uh, the scorpion would probably look something along these lines, and then it would have a stinger right here. And then probably, yeah, the, the, the claws would be maybe here. And uh, yeah, so now what we can do is we can go into edit mode and start, we can just start modeling the scorpion. So scorpions have an inner body, a top shell and a bottom shell. So we'll start off by modeling the inner body. So uh, basically what we can do is we can add a subdivision surface modifier on that cube, uh, bring that up to maybe three. And then uh, we can in x-ray mode, uh, bring these vertices up like this, maybe rotate them and scale them down. Uh, now to flatten them out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one, two, maybe three loop cuts, and then we can just simply bring these down like that. So it basically follows the uh, the sketch, you know, as close as possible. However, I just remembered the Y axis represents the ground. So we can just bring these vertices up like this so that the sketch represents uh, the bottom side of the scorpion. And then we can maybe bring this up. Now we can bring these vertices down like this, maybe make these a little bit taller to give it some, some thickness. And then in the top view, we can uh, scale these along the X axis like that. And uh, maybe these a little bit more, again, just to make it a little bit wider. And I would say that would work for now. All right, now we can start working on the top shell. Uh, to do this, we're simply going to add in a cube. Uh, we're gonna use the mirror modifier for this. So in edit mode, we can add a loop cut in the middle here, and then we can select these four vertices and delete those like that. Uh, then we can add our modifier and select mirror modifier. And then now we can also add a subdivision surface modifier and probably bring those up to three here and three there. Uh, perfect. So if we move this up like that, uh, we can now scale it down along the Z axis like that just to flatten it out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and position it uh, so that it rests on the main body as best as possible. So let's bring this down like that. And then here we can place it maybe somewhere around here and then rotate this like that. We could also add another loop cut here just to make it even more, uh, you know, round. So that would be quite nice, maybe like that. And um, here the edge is a bit too, you know, it, it's too pointy, so we can add another loop cut here and bring this forwards like that. That way we have a nice round edge. And I'll tell you what, that works for me. Uh, the top shell on scorpions is actually divided in seven sections, uh, and I believe this is so that they're able to be uh, more flexible. Uh, so what we can do here is we can extrude uh, seven times, or we could extrude only once, and then maybe scale this down like that. And then we can add six loop cuts, not seven. So we can go in and add one, two, three, four, five, six loop cuts like that. Also, the sections that are closer to the head are actually very close to each other, and then the further away you get, the more spaced out. So we can uh, select uh, those and then hit G twice to slide those up and down. And then here we can bring these forwards like that. Then select these, bring these forwards. Not quite so much, uh, but I'm sure you get the point. And um, you know, they, they're just more and more spaced out basically. So probably something like that, something like that. And yeah, something like that would work just fine. Now it's just a matter of uh, moving the vertices around and trying to uh, make them rest on the main body. Okay, and this is what we have so far. So now to create the sections, we're just going to add um, two extra loop cuts on top of the loop cuts we already created. So the first one would be probably somewhere around here. So we wanna bring this one forward, kind of like that. Then you'll select the one on the left and then scale it up just slightly like that. 
and then add another one here and close that off like that. And you can see that this creates a really nice crease. And now just repeat that step for all the other loop cuts. And then maybe just add another loop cut here to close that edge off like that. And there it is. And yeah, it's definitely starting to look like a like an insect now, like a bug. Oh, and yeah, add another loop cut right there to make that edge nice and round like that. Scorpions have a bit of a crease on their head. So simply select these vertices like that and maybe pull them back like this. And then you can follow along with these ones too. And maybe these ones are sticking out a little bit too much. So let's bring those back a little bit here and then maybe, yep. So you want to end up with something that looks kind of like this. And before I forget, right click Shade Smooth and right click Shade Smooth. Great. Uh, so that's the top shell done. Now let's work on the bottom shell. Uh, the bottom shell I don't think has those sections in it. So uh, we're just basically going to copy uh, the uh, main body. So duplicate that. And then in edit mode, we're just going to scale it down along the Z axis to flatten it out like that. And then bring it down like this. Um, let's just add uh, a loop cut here to round that edge off. And because we didn't use the mirror modifier, let's do the same thing on the left. And then maybe one in the middle like that. And now in the x-ray mode, uh, let's select these uh, vertices right here so we can move this around. And then maybe just uh, bring these up a little bit like that, just a tad, and then do the same thing uh, here as well bring those up like that. And again, you can spend a little bit of time just trying to uh, match the main body as close as you can. And also don't worry about it not being perfectly symmetrical because of course in nature, nothing is perfectly symmetrical. And I would say that would do for now. So advanced CG can get quite complicated. Uh, it involves good 3D skills, but also a strong critical mind. To be able to effectively problem solve, there's no better way than to train your mind, practice, get used to problem solving, and then bring these skills to your CG art. And this is where today's sponsor comes in. A huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands-on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science that really allows you to improve your your STEM knowledge. This is absolutely crucial in improving your CG art. So uh, if you want to take your learning skills to the next level, you can sign up to Brilliant by checking out the link in the video description. Uh, the first 200 of you will receive 20% off a year of Brilliant Premium. All right, let's get back to the video. Uh, now we can work on the tail. And uh, scorpions have a tail again in sections, and I believe they have one, two, three, four sections. Uh, so let's add in a cube, and then in edit mode, we can bring this up like that. Uh, yeah, here, let's use the mirror modifier here. So again, add a loop cut, and then in the x-ray mode, select these four vertices and delete them like that. Add a modifier, add a... Yeah, mirror modifier, and then here we can also add a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, make that two, three, three. So what we can do here is we can start off by scaling it down along the z-axis like that. And then probably we can add a loop cut right here. And also because we're in the mirror modifier, we need to also be careful that uh, if we start editing uh, these, yeah, so we need to enable clipping. And now if we select these, we can bring these back like that. So we get a bit of a, a rounded off uh, cylinder. Uh, here we can add in two loop cuts right here. So one there and then scale it up like that. And then another one, oops, and then another one here and scale it up like that. And then maybe bring it forwards a little bit. Um, yeah, and then maybe this one can be a bit smaller just to create like a nice, uh, a nice shape. And then what we can do here is we can add a, a bit of like a like a socket because the, the the sections are actually held together by little pieces of cartilage uh, So we can add in we can extrude those out bring those down a little bit like that and Then maybe extrude them in and scale those down like that just to get a nice uh, nice socket and we'll do the same thing on this side Nice and I would say that is the top section done uh, you can, of course, go in and add a little bit more detail and spend some more time uh, making this look really nice. Uh, we can actually um, mess around with these vertices a little bit and pull them in random directions. Uh, this will uh, prevent the uh, the model from looking too uh, computer generated. And again, it'll just make it look more organic and natural. But of course, we're nitpicking at this point. So I would say that that is fine. 
Uh, so then what we can do is we can duplicate those uh, sections. So if we select everything here, uh, let's duplicate it like that and then rotate it along here and maybe scale this one down a little bit and then place it along the sketch you drew earlier so that it matches the reference and then, yeah, maybe something like that. And then if you want to mess with the thickness, you can click on Alt S and this will, oops, Alt S and this will kind of uh, make it puffier or thinner. And then let's duplicate this one again and then rotate it like that. Uh, these ones are a little bit smaller, so we can put them, put them right here. And then let's duplicate that one more time. Rotate, scale down, and make this one a little bit thicker. And we'll put it right there. And don't worry about the spaces between the sections. We'll be adding cartilage in there later in the video. Also, this one uh, is perfectly horizontal for now, which is rarely the case in nature. You really have perfectly horizontal uh, shapes, so we can probably move this one around just a little bit like that. And the name of the game here is just to make it look as natural as possible. Now we can add my favorite part, which is the stinger. Uh, so to do this, we're just going to add in a cube in edit mode. We'll bring this up like that. Uh, once again, we'll add a subdivision surface modifier, make that two, three. We won't even bother with a mirror modifier here because it's, you know, it's quite, it's quite simple. And uh, what we can do is we can simply extrude this out like that and then maybe bring this down like this. Uh, but this is still too too straight. I want like a bit more of a of a hook, so we can simply add in more loop cuts and just add more geometry. And uh, yeah, just play with it until we're happy. So I'm going to add in a few more loop cuts like that. Uh, yeah, let's make that look nice and sharp. And let's actually, you know, let's even bring this. Let's add one more here. Rotate it like that, and then maybe we can bring this one back like that and make it scale it down. That'll make it look nice and sharp. And now here we can just mess around with these vertices like that. So we can bring these up like this, maybe just to make it look more round. Uh, of course, it's way too big, so let's scale it down. And then just place it uh, at the tip of the tail. Uh, you can make it as big as you want. I'm probably going to go with something maybe like that and just try and fit it in that socket we uh, modeled earlier. And yeah, so at this point, you should end up with something like this. Now let's work on the claws. Uh, so the claws are a little bit more tricky to model because the shape is a little bit strange. Uh, but let's just add in a cube and in edit mode, let's bring this to the right. And let's add a mirror modifier and a subdivision surface modifier. Make that two, three. And let's make that three. Uh, let's scale it down along the x-axis like this, just to flatten it out. Uh, now let's add two loop cuts right here, and then maybe move these up a little bit like that. Uh, select these four vertices, whoops, here. And let's just extrude those out, something like that. And then let's just scale these down. Uh, you can add another loop cut here and maybe bring this up a little bit like that. In x-ray mode, let's bring these vertices back here a little bit like that because it looks a little bit too square at the moment. So let's simply bring those back like that. And uh, the claws on top of scorpions actually bend forward slightly like this. Uh, so we can uh, easily uh, do this by simply grabbing those vertices and rotating them like that. And then we can bring them forwards a little bit like that. Maybe we can scale those down, not too much along the y-axis. So let's bring those back up like that. And then in uh, proportional editing mode, we can uh, go in and maybe play around with those vertices a little bit just to you know pull them around. And once again, to make them look a bit less computer generated and a bit more organic. If you spend more than 30 seconds on this, it would probably be nitpicking. So uh, something, yeah, something like that would be fine for now. And of course, we'll be adding a lot more detail later on in sculpting. So let's not worry about that too much. Uh, shade smooth. The bottom claw will be a separate object, so let's just quickly add in a cube and once again bring this over to the right. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Oh, well, should have done a mirror first, but in this case the order doesn't matter. And let's mm, yeah, make that three. Uh, then we can simply go in and maybe scale it down along the z-axis. Let's get out of proportional editing. X-ray mode, I keep forgetting. Let's scale this down like that. And then let's bring these vertices in. Uh, yeah, so let's just uh, put those two in place. We'll add a, uh, a loop cut right there and a loop cut here just to, you know, better define those edges uh, so that they don't uh, bother us later on. And then we can bring this up, maybe add in a loop cut there. And let's just bring this down like that. Whoops, so you can see that this is way too thick, so we can simply scale that down 
along the x-axis like that nice and easy um, yeah, I would say that works quite well. Maybe we can uh, play around with the rotation a little bit just to get it to, uh, you know, fit better with the top claw. But uh, yeah, no, honestly, I would say that that works fine. We can maybe make it a little bit thicker by scaling it on, on along the x-axis. Uh, let's bring these ones in, though. Uh, we can maybe scale this one up a little bit like that. Let's not spend too much time on this. You know, that would be it would be nitpicking. Uh, I would say the claws are a little bit too long in comparison to the size of this, uh, you know, this this sphere thing. So if you select both of these, you can go in edit mode and edit both of them at the same time, which is a fantastic uh, new feature. I believe this was introduced in 2.8. Yeah, I, I'd say that works fine. For now, yeah, that works. Uh, that works quite well. So we can, yeah, if we shade this smooth. Oh, uh, you can see, yeah, you can see the bottom claw here is sticking out. So uh, we can either make these uh, vertices thinner so it hides in the top mesh, or we can make the top mesh thicker. Uh, but I would say that this uh, works quite well. Like that. Fantastic. Uh, now let's uh, select both of these. And in edit mode, let's try and position them as close as possible to, well, where they would be on a scorpion. So it would be sort of in front here like that. Uh, remember, the, uh, the x axis would be the ground. So the the, the claws wouldn't be below that, so uh, yeah, maybe something like this. Maybe we could bring those, um, maybe kind of like that. I do want them to be uh, rotated like this a little bit. And yes, uh, that works quite well for me, so we'll call those done. Uh, now the next part would be to model the pedipalps. So the pedipalps are, I guess, like the little arms that would link the uh, uh, claw to the body. And the pedipalps actually are very similar to the sections on the tail, so we'll basically try and recreate that uh, real quick. So add a modifier, subdivision surface, two, three, three, and let's add in also a mirror modifier, and you know you can reorder them, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, scale that down, and maybe scale this one like this. Uh, yeah, we're just going to try and recreate that, um, like that bone-looking kind of thing, and then uh, we'll add in the sockets because just like the tail, the pedipalps uh, use like I guess cartilage to hold them together. Uh, now I know uh, cartilage isn't the technical term. Uh, I'm sure some of you will let me know uh, what the real term is, but um, yes, yeah, so you get the idea. So let's just extrude that in and extrude that like that. So like these four vertices here, and do the same thing. Uh, extrude in, extrude, and scale that down. Lovely jubbly. Um, yes, so now that's, I guess that would be the basic uh, section, and in the pedipalps there are three. Uh, the first one is actually very small, but uh, the first one, tell you what, let's just put this one here and then we'll duplicate that one, we'll save this one for later. So let's uh, make this one a lot smaller like this, make it look a bit more something like that and you know, want to give it like a bit of a curve and this is what's going to stick out of the body so if we bring those down like that and maybe have them kind of stick out almost parallel to the x-axis and then in front view we can tweak that you don't want those to stick out too high I think they they stick out kind of like at the base here and uh, yeah probably want to try and make sure that the the, uh, the mesh wouldn't clip through the ground so let's uh, have them yeah up a little bit like that and uh, yeah, we can we can maybe tweak those. We can bring those vertices in a bit more like that, and then we can play around with these to make it once again look a bit more organic. So let's try and uh, mess around with those a little bit. Um, maybe if I rotate those like that. Yeah, I mean honestly, at this point, we're not really going to get a huge uh, huge difference. Uh, shade that smooth before I forget. Uh, okay, and now in edit mode, let's uh, bring this one. Uh, so to select that, you could uh, you could select one of the vertices and click on Control L, or just in X-ray mode, just select the whole thing. And let's bring this one forward like that. Um, this one would will need to be a little bit smaller, I think. So probably about this size. Let's bring it back like that. And the third one will, will be linking these two, so keep that in mind. Uh, you know, don't make it too crazy long or too small. Um, yes, and uh, yeah, let's bring that up, obviously. And these vertices right here would need to be scale down a little bit so they fit nicely in the socket. Uh, here let's uh, exit x-ray mode so we can have a better idea of what we're doing. So yeah, try and position these so that they fit nicely in the socket like that. Lovely, and we can even make these ones a little bit bigger. So let's scale those up like that. And uh, then let's again click on Control L and duplicate that whole section. 
uh, rotate it, and now we are going to create the section that links the claw to the pedipalp. Um, actually, you know what, I just realized uh, this one should be rotated in the other direction, because right now I'm going to have a hard time linking them. So if we hit uh, 7, we can maybe yeah, rotate those a little bit on that side as well. Yeah, that's probably the, the proper anatomy anyway. Um, yeah, let's click on that here. And then we can maybe bring those in like this. And then if we select all of these vertices here, let's just rotate those here and try and position them. Uh, put them in place. Uh, this one is definitely has definitely got a bit more of a curve to it. So so let's just uh, yeah try and position those as close as possible and make them look nice and pretty. Uh, also, actually, well the the crease here definitely won't look very pretty because you know the two meshes are clipping into each other. But this you know at this angle you won't be able to to really see it, uh, or at the angle the camera will be positioned later on, it won't be very visible. So don't worry about this uh, crease looking too pretty. So just like before, let's try and make these ones fit in like that. So let's bring these down and scale them in a little bit like that. And I would say that that looks quite good. So now you should end up with something similar to this. Now we can start working on the legs. Uh, scorpions have eight legs, not six. Scorpions are arachnids. And the legs are actually uh, very similar to the tail and the, the pedipalps. So to do this, simply add in a cube and once again in edit mode, bring that to the right, add in a mirror modifier and a subdivision surface modifier, make that one, two, three. Uh, the legs definitely have a lot more, well, they will have a lot more geometry to them. So don't go too crazy on these values here. So let's scale this down maybe and then scale it along the X axis a little bit. And uh, yeah, so add in a loop cut right here. And once again, add in a loop cut there and a loop cut there. Bring this up like that. And once again, we can maybe scale these up a little bit. Extrude, scale in, extrude, scale in to create the sockets. Extrude, scale in, extrude, scale in. Awesome. Uh, and yeah, definitely don't spend too much time making this look nice and pretty because the legs are so small that no one's going to really see them anyway. The legs are a lot more thick on the Z axis than they are on the X and Y axis. So we can select these vertices and pull those down just a little bit, just to stretch them out just a tad. Maybe this one a little bit more. We'll model the leg uh, right here separately so we can see what we're doing. And then once we're done, we will uh, duplicate it and do all that fun stuff to make it fit the scorpion. Okay, so let's uh, just rotate this one like this. Maybe place it up like that. And then yeah, just duplicate. And this one will be the, the, the smaller one that just sticks out of the body. So this one's definitely a lot more thin. Uh, probably something like this and then we'll have this one uh, position that one like that and then control L duplicate this one and then rotate it slightly like that. You don't want it to be completely horizontal you want it to be slightly uh, lean forward like that and it'll probably be about the same size as the first one maybe a little bit smaller and then duplicate that one more time rotate it like this and position it like that. Now this one's way too long, so let's scale it down along the, the Z axis. You can see it's getting warped, uh, but in this case, it really doesn't matter because we're gonna be, well, <laughs> like right now, we're just gonna be warping it anyway. And that'll be more or less it. Uh, let's bring these vertices in like this. So yeah, something like that. Bring it in here and here. This is just so that the cartilage won't be quite so visible. And maybe you can bring this one down like that. Now we can select this one, we can duplicate it like that. Uh, we can scale it down here and uh, let's make it a little bit smaller along the z-axis like that. This will be the little feet. Uh, the feet will have two little uh, claws sticking out but we'll probably add those in the uh, sculpting. And there it is. Uh, you should end up with something similar to this. Uh, we can even make the, the middle sections here a little bit thinner. Uh, so let's just scale these down like that. Scale this down like that. This will just make it look a little bit more creepy. Great, uh, now in edit mode, let's select everything and try and merge this with the body. Uh, but you can see, of course, right now, it's obviously way too big, so we can scale this down like that. And then maybe we can bring it in uh, somewhere around here and then making sure, of course, it's uh, nice and low. Uh, yeah, you want, the, uh, you want the legs to stick out kind of, um, you know, where the, where the, the, the main body uh, intersects with the bottom shell. Now, of course, you can see the legs are perfectly parallel with the x-axis, which is, once again, definitely not what we want. So we can rotate these slightly 
uh, like this, and then we can position them like that. And then let's make sure that the legs are touching the ground, or at least the tip of the legs are touching the ground. So maybe we could rotate that a little bit here and then bring it down. That's probably a bit too much. If you go in x-ray mode, you can see that the y-axis, once again, would represent the ground. And you should end up with something like this. Now, before we start duplicating those uh, other six legs, we will want to start adding the cartilage here because then it will be just it'll just be a nightmare to uh, <laughs> to add it for uh, all the other legs. And the cartilage we're really just going to do something super simple. We're going to duplicate one of those uh, sections. We can duplicate it, and then we are going to rotate it. And what we're basically just going to try and make it. I'm just going to mash it into like this 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 like this sphere, like this this little ball kind of thing. Uh, we can maybe make this a bit bigger. And of course, the whole point is that this shape should be very non-mathematical uh, and very, you know, just very warped and distorted and it should look organic. Uh, yeah, perfect. So control L, select all of that. And then we can just, uh, yeah, put those in position. Um, maybe in the uh, normal view, we can make sure that the cartilage is really fits in the sockets. Yeah, you can just maybe kind of scale it and warp it and try and get it to, to fit as best as possible. But uh, something, yeah, perfect, awesome. And then of course, duplicate. And uh, yeah, just repeat that step for the other joints. And there it is. And before I forget, right click and shade smooth. Okay, uh, now let's just uh, select all of that and we can now duplicate it along the Y axis like this. Uh, you can see now, obviously the legs are perfectly parallel to each other, which is not what we want. Uh, but we also want the back legs to be a lot longer than the front legs. And actually the, the further back you get, the longer they get. So let's rotate the leg like that, uh, more or less along the, the X axis, scale it a tiny bit re-rotate it, but make sure it is rotated a little bit more than the front one. And then basically just repeat that step. So duplicate, rotate it like that, scale it along the x-axis, re-rotate it, and put it back into place. And yeah, maybe even a little bit more than that. And then once again, duplicate, uh, rotate, or actually no, rotate along the x-axis. Yeah, let's just scale that down, rotate, and position like that. Yeah, the back legs are actually really long, you'd be surprised. And if you just need an idea of the proportions, uh, the back leg should probably be a tangent to the back of the tail or something quite similar to that. And there it is, looking really creepy. Uh, I might actually scale those or make them a little bit thicker. So hitting Alt S, I can just buff those up just a tad. There we go, that makes the legs look a little bit thicker. And I would say we are done for the legs. Now let's move on to the tail. We just need to add some cartilage like we did for the, well, for the legs. So we can, uh, like we did with the legs, m uh, move these forwards just a little bit so that the cartilage won't be quite so visible. And then maybe down here, we can make the uh, bottom section of the tail merge better with the body. And because right now it's a little bit too thick and yeah, we can just move those vertices around so that they, they you know, so they, they merge nicely together. And then just like with the legs, let's duplicate one of these sections and then just mash it into a ball. Uh, let's maybe bring these down like that. Bring those down, scale up. Okay, and now that you have a hideous looking sphere, let's just grab those vertices and now we can just place them uh, between the sections. And that is the tail pretty much done. Uh, this top section here is a tiny bit too long, so let's just go into edit mode. Oh, actually, let's grab the stinger as well. X-ray view, let's bring these uh, forwards just a tad like that. So at this point, you should have something that looks like this. Scorpions do have two little claws in their mouth, which is what they use to chomp on their prey. So instead of remodeling two claws, let's just uh, duplicate the ones we've already created and we'll just scale them down a little bit. So select those, duplicate and scale. Maybe we can bring them out a little bit like that. Rotate like this, make them a bit bigger and we can position them 
maybe somewhere like this. Um, actually, yeah, so they do need to be behind this uh, top shell, and you can now see that the inner body is interfering with that. So let's bring those uh, front vertices here backwards a little bit. So this way we can create like a bit of a cavity. Uh, so now if you go into edit mode and in, uh, yeah, select all those vertices, you can bring them in kind of like that. And uh, maybe Alt S to make them a bit more fat like that. Bring them out. This will be quite hard to see though with the ambient occlusion. It will be, well, in, in, in the dark basically. Um, maybe here now we can see that the pedipalps are kind of floating in midair. So let's grab those vertices right there and we can bring them in like that a little bit and just make them look a bit more as if you know they're they're really coming from inside the body there uh, the top part of the shell here is a tiny bit pointy so maybe we can bring uh, those vertices back just a little bit like this just to give it a bit more of a, a round edge and then we can uh, bring those vertices forwards a tiny bit like that so at this point, you should have something like this. Uh, the last thing we can do to the model is to add two eyes. And a simple way to do that would be to add in two UV spheres. Uh, we can select that. Let's move that to the right. And then let's add in a modifier, a mirror modifier. But uh, we won't even bother with the subdivision surface because there's, there's enough geometry already. And these eyes will be so small that it won't be noticeable uh, if there's not enough geometry anyway. Uh, so position those maybe somewhere like this. Uh, now these eyes are really tiny on scorpions. It's it's quite it's quite odd looking, but they have these two tiny little uh, yeah like these little eyes right there on top. And also don't forget right click shade smooth. And at this point we are done with the model. So something we can do now is to add some detail in sculpt mode. So let's do that right now. But the first thing we need to do before that is to apply the subdivision surface modifier so that the sculpting tools have enough geometry to work with. So to do that under the modify tab here we have three divisions. Now we are gonna wanna bump this up to five. Uh, if your computer struggles with this, you wanna probably bring it back down to four, but mine should be all right. And the more detail you have, the more refined your sculpt will be, but the more processing power it's gonna take. So I'm gonna go with five, so we can hit apply, and I'll do the same thing here. I'll bump that up to five, apply. And for the pedipalps and the legs, we are gonna leave them at three because they already have quite a lot of geometry already. So we'll make that three. Uh, the tail as well, we'll leave that at three and we'll leave the stinger as it is. And also the top shell, we won't uh, be sculpting any detail on that. So we'll just leave as it is. And now if we go back into edit mode, we can really see uh, all the detail we have here, which is probably gonna be plenty to uh, sculpt with. Same thing here, and the pedipalps, we've got quite a bit. We've got a lot less geometry, but there'll be a lot less sculpting on those anyway. Um, so what we can do is to simply click on the claw, and then in sculpt mode, we can scroll down to the snake hook tool. And now at this point, I am gonna start using a tablet. Uh, if you have a mouse, that's fine. You can definitely still sculpt with a, with a mouse. Uh, it's just that it won't be quite as easy. So if you click on F, we can play around with the radius of the tool. So we wanna make it probably about this size. And then I'm just gonna pull up some just little lumps, little, uh, yeah, little spikes. This will just give it some texture, maybe a line down there like that. And then maybe I'll add another line down here like this. Definitely wanna make this subtle. Don't wanna go too crazy with the, <laughs> the size of the lumps because it'll, it, it could definitely ruin the whole thing. Maybe we could add a few down here like this, maybe something like that. And then maybe just a few down here like this. And now for the actual claw, we can maybe increase the scale or the, the radius of the brush, uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe like that. And then we can just pull down these nasty looking spikes and this will just make the claw look a lot more aggressive. And you know what? I would probably call that done for the top one. Uh, so let's move on to the bottom one. Uh, sculpt mode. Uh, again, we'll have the snake hook tool. I'll start off with the, the bigger lumps here. So let's, yeah, we could just pull those up like this. And just like the top one with the smaller radius, we can just add little lumps, just little spikes to give it some some depth, some some texture. And I would say that looks pretty mean. Uh, also, I just remembered if you wanna go a step further on the top claw, if we go back into sculpt mode, we can sculpt like a, we can sculpt a socket, kind of like what we did with the legs in uh, modeling, but here we can sculpt it. So if we go into the clay strips tool, if you hold down control, we can, I guess, kind of dig um, 
well just a like a socket we can dig a bit of a bit of a hole so let's just sculpt that all the way around like this without being too crazy on the intensity but something like that and a little finishing touch we can add is with the inflate tool we can go around and like the name suggests just inflate that, that you know that edge and there you go. Now that is a mean looking claw. Because we have the mirror modifier active, all that sculpting was of course uh, mirrored on that other side. So I would say for the claws, we're done. Now let's move on to the pedipalps and let's just sculpt in some detail. And now we can do the same thing with the legs and with the tail. And there it is. I would say that that is done. Oh, one more thing, of course, the feet. Uh, like I said, the feet have two little claw things sticking out, so we can easily uh, add that in uh, the sculpt mode uh, by simply, once again, using the snake hook tool. We can just kind of extrude like two little spike thingies like that. Doesn't look very clean, honestly, it's a bit rough, but it's, it's just so small that it's, it just won't be noticeable at all. So let's just do that here. And one more time right there. There we go. You can see it's just a, a tiny detail that does add a lot to the model. Also, one more thing. Uh, you'll notice that here the geometry looks very rough. And if we go in flat mode, you can see that the vertices have just been yanked up. And if we try and shade that smooth, of course, it's going to cause problems. So if your computer can handle this, uh, you can try and add an extra subdivision surface on top of that. And that will kind of, well, just subdivide that once more and add extra geometry. Here in render, you'd probably want to bring that down to one or you'll have problems. Uh, I'm probably going to do that, in fact. But if your computer can't handle it, don't worry about it. In the render, it won't be that visible anyway. But here it is. I would say that the model is complete. So now we can start working on the rendering. I found a really nice 3D photo scan of a rock in BlendSwap. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go and pick that up. So what we're going to do is we are going to copy that and then simply paste it in our scene like that. Now, of course, the scorpion's a bit too big for now. So we will just scale this whole thing up like that. And then probably we can try and position the scorpion on this big rock right there. This might take a little bit of time, but I'm just going to try and position that as close as I can. And this is what that looks like. Now, of course, when we go in the viewport render, you'll see that we haven't applied any materials to the scorpion. So let's do that now. Uh, in the shader editor, I never know where it is. There it is. Uh, we're gonna add a few different types of materials. Uh, I guess the first one we could add would be a simple black, uh, you know, like black shiny uh, material for the, the top and bottom shell. So using the principled BSDF node, we can click on the base color, make that black, and then bring the roughness down, maybe something like that. And we could call that shell. Uh, now for the claws, we're going to use something a little bit different. We're going to add a normal map to add a little bit more roughness to the textures. So let's add in a new material, call that claw. Uh, we'll make this black just like before and bring the roughness down a little bit. But we're also going to add, like I said, a normal map. So to generate the normal map, we're going to use a texture, noise texture. And if we plug this into the base color, we can see what that is generating. It's like this weird cloudy thing. Uh, we can bring the scale uh, all the way up. This will create more of a grainy look. And then the detail, we can bring that down to zero and the roughness will leave at 0.5. Now let's add in a vector normal map, click that right there and plug this into the color and the normal can be plugged into the normal map of the uh, principal BSDF node. And as you can see right now, it looks way too, well, the normal map is way too strong. So we can bring this down to something like maybe 0.2. And I'll tell you what, that looks perfect. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. So let's leave it as it is. So that would be uh, the claw. Uh, here we can apply that same claw texture to the bottom claw. And we'll do the same thing with the pedipalps, so claw, and even, yeah, the legs, we can do the same thing, claw. 
and then the tail will also apply that. Uh, the stinger will go for a much more uh, uh, like a dark red stinger. I think Emperor Scorpions have stingers like that. We'll call that stinger. Uh, let's make the base color red. Or oh, let's just turn the hue all the way up or all the, all the way down. And let's bring the value all the way down like this. Saturation definitely needs to be all the way up. And then roughness will bring that not all the way down because that never looks very realistic. We can maybe make it something like that. Uh, now the inner body is actually very soft and it has a bit of a, um, I know Emperor Scorpions, it's, it's like a weird gray color. So we can create, I guess we'll call this, I think, well, this is like a default material. So we'll call this uh, soft and we'll make that a darker gray. We'll not make it completely black. We'll just make it gray. And the roughness, we can, yeah, it's definitely can be turned quite high up. And specular, we'll bring that down a little bit because it is very, uh, it's not, the, you know, this texture is not shiny at all. And the bottom shell needs to be not soft, but needs to be, well, shell. And there we go. That looks quite good. Uh, the eyes can be a very shiny black. So we'll make that, yeah, call that eye. And we'll make that a base color black. And in this case, we can turn the roughness all the way down. Now, usually you wouldn't turn the roughness all the way down for organic creatures like this, but I guess the eyes would be the only exception. And I would say that that looks really nice. Now, I am noticing the top shell does look a little bit smooth and, you know, compared to the rest of the body, it looks a bit strange. So we can, well, we could either just simply apply the, um, the claw texture to the top carapace. Or we could create a slightly different, um, slightly different texture. So we can go and add in a texture. Uh, where is that noise texture? And kind of repeat those same steps as we did before. But we'll make this one. Uh, whoops. We'll make this one a little bit different. Like this. We'll turn this down to 0.2 or even less. I don't know. We'll see. And we can make the uh, scale a lot bigger. Maybe something like that. And I know this isn't very realistic because, uh, well, especially Emperor Scorpions, again, have a very uh, smooth uh, texture to them. But in this case, it does look a little bit strange. So we can just add a little bit of roughness by adding a very fine uh, noise to it. But honestly, I would say that this is good. And oh, one more thing. The cartilage is definitely a different color than the rest. So if we select one of those vertices and click on Control L, then we can, in the uh, Materials tab, add in a new material. And for now, let's just use the soft material we had before and assign that tech or those vertices to that texture. And there we go. Though I'm not actually too sure I like that soft material. We can probably, let's add in actually, you know what, let's make a new one. We'll call that cartilage. And I won't write the whole word because I'm scared I'll make a spelling mistake. And those vertices can be assigned to the cartilage texture like that. Uh, so here, if we go into the principal BSDF node, we could probably make that, I guess, like a darker brown, probably. I mean, you can, you know, feel free to experiment and try and find something that looks good for you. But I'm probably going to try something like this. Let's make it shiny. And uh, here, let's do the same thing with the legs. And I would say that looks pretty good for now. Now don't spend too much time on the texturing just yet because when you actually start adding lighting and you know when you start rendering, uh, the color can you know a lot of times really significantly change depending on where you place the lights and stuff. So let's work on that now. So let's bring the rocks back and see what that looks like in the viewport preview. That looks nice. Uh, so now what we can do is we can add, well, we can either add lights manually, or in this case, because it's an outdoor scene, we can simply add an HDR. And uh, there are a few different places you can get HDRs. You can go to HDRI Heaven, which is where I get mine. Yeah, if we go into the shader editor and add a, or if you go into the world tab here, you'll have a background node. If you add in a texture, environment texture, and click that, put that right here, and you connect the color to color, then you can open up an HDRI you downloaded from whatever website. I left a link of the HDRI I used in this particular tutorial if you want to download it and follow along. And I added that in right there. Uh, now, if you go into the rendered view and exit the perspective mode or enter the perspective mode, 
you can now navigate around it and kind of see what that looks like. By default, uh, Blender uses Eevee as a render engine. Uh, Eevee can be pretty good in some instances, but I mean, I'm old school and I just like using cycles, so we'll use cycles for this tutorial. Here, I would recommend you use the GPU compute because a lot of times GPUs are a lot faster than the CPUs. And here's what that looks like. Uh, tell you what, let's enter the camera view. And if we click on view, view, here we can click on camera to view. Uh, this will allow us to navigate around the scorpion and the camera will sort of snap to our point of view, which makes things a lot easier. So let's frame the scorpion kind of like this. Lovely jubbly. Um, we can play around with the position of the sun a little bit. So if you go into the shader editor and if you have the node wrangler uh, add-on uh, active, you can click on control T and that'll add these two nodes or you could just add them in manually. Uh, what we can do is we can rotate the HDRI along the Z axis. And if you, yeah, got to be a little bit patient because it might take some time. But this will, you know, it'll basically just rotate the whole thing around the scorpion and then you can kind of play around with the shadows and maybe find like a, you know, like a sun angle that you like. But actually by default at zero degrees, I actually quite like that a lot because you can actually see the, the shadow of the stinger on the rock, which looks pretty cool. And also there are no like distracting shadows and stuff. Okay, so that looks really good. But there's one more thing we can do, and that would be to add a particle system. And this would be to add little hairs, uh, basically just sticking out of the claws and maybe the stinger. So if you click on the claws and in the particle properties, let's add in a new particle system. Click on hair. Uh, if we go in advanced and then down here under source, we can click on the use modify stack. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is because you can see that the hairs, whoops, the hairs are only being applied on one side and it's not taking into consideration the fact that we have a mirror modifier uh, enabled. So if you click on use modify stack, it will look at all the modifiers you have and it'll just you know make things a lot uh, better. And let's do the same thing with the stinger. So let's add in a hair system. Once again, the number can go down to maybe 100 this time. And the length, let's make that one. Yeah, that's probably a bit too long. Let's, let's make that 0.5. Bit too short, <laughs> let's make that 0.75. And the number can be, no, maybe 50. Yeah, this really needs to be subtle. Uh, you don't want your scorpion looking like a, a cactus. So let's keep that as it is. And uh, ah, you know what, let's just add one more uh, system on the tail, just to give it that extra oomph. And let's make that 0.5. Okay, let's give this a test render and see what we get. And there it is, yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> that is a mean looking scorpion. Uh, there is a few things we can definitely improve. Uh, maybe the inside of the mouth here was a bit uh, was a bit rushed and it's just, you know, a little bit uh, lacks in detail. Um, yeah, the, the stinger maybe is a little bit too red or it's a bit too, looks a bit too artificial. Uh, <laughs> the legs are clipping through the rock and I think the, the, the bottom shell is clipping through the rock also. But for the sake of this tutorial, I would say that we are done. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is my first attempt at making a proper advanced uh, tutorial, so if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to read your feedback. And that'll be it, so happy blending, and I will see you next time.